Have you guys seen any of the the negative press coming around UFC 249? Corporate greed. Corporate greed, this was called. To the point that Dana actually had to go out and defend himself. This is almost hard for me to speak on because of the level of ridiculousness. I'm choosing to speak on it because it's so fun, because it's so ridiculous, okay? You've got our MMA, our people, I know MMA.com, that always has come out from the beginning of time and known everything about the business. Struggle to ever earn or turn a dollar in the business, but they've always been an expert on the business, not just the sport, they know the business. They know who's being exploited. They know where the numbers are. They know the percentage that's being paid out. They know everything about a private company that nobody knows anything about. They know everything about. You then have a piece done by the Wall Street Journal, who I think we can all agree is very reputable. If we can't agree to that, we can at least agree that they're massive. There's no way to deny that. That had a totally different take. They were talking about WME is hemorrhaging money. The UFC is trying to figure out how to keep things open right now. Then you have Dana coming out, and he's going to do this fight island. But you have to understand and look at all of these things in conjunction to see how silly corporate greed is. So the final analysis of why Dana is going to have fight island is because of his rights deal with ESPN. Guys, do we not understand how this works? Do I really need to break this down for you? Okay, let, allow me to. I'm embarrassed if you don't know this, but I know MMA.com does have some level of influence in assisting. This is over corporate grade. So Dana's going to go get an island. He's going to build an infrastructure and he's doing it specifically for one reason. It isn't to hold shows, not just. It's doing it to hold shows where everybody from everywhere in the globe internationally can come in so that we can observe the integrity of the rankings, that we can observe title fights, that we can get the right guys together. That is not how his deal with ESPN works, okay? Excuse me. All he has to do is provide 11 fights X amount of times a year. He could literally go and find a location. He could do it right here in Portland. I'm telling we have enough fighters right here in Portland. He could just match up guys in the city that I live in and provide his end of the bargain, which is 11 fights a night, and he could repeat that over and over. He could do that in Iowa. He could do that in Florida. Oh my goodness, could he ever do that easily in Florida? You know how many great gyms they have out there in Florida? Just by example. He could lock everything down and leave, allow it to be locked down, go to absolutely no expense, not give ESPN the wonderful fights, not give you guys the wonderful fights, not give the fighters that he's promised fights and opportunities to, who in all fairness have earned it, but now are locked in certain places. And he could just do it in Vegas with Vegas guys. He could sign them up today. Half would already be under contract, and believe me, he'd get a, a lot of them to volunteer, and he could fulfill his end of the contract and get that money, that corporate greed. Not what he's doing. He's the one shelling out the money, trying to figure out how to make this thing happen, trying to make it happen in a neutral territory that everybody can get to, and he gets to write the damn check while he loses his live gate, loses his merchandising. I have a feeling, and we're going to find out... Uh, very quickly at 249, that sponsors are even not completely there. I'm guessing the Octagon probably says monster in the middle of it and probably has a couple of movie advertisements put up that he's doing his favors to friends like Mark Wahlberg. I mean, that's my guess. It's a totally different business. As far as his obligation, he has to provide X amount of fights, X amount of time for X amount of content. Where's the corporate greed and somebody trying to figure this out? Oh, and by the way, writing the check the entire damn time. Do you know what happens at the end of 249? I have a feeling you guys do. But I know MMA.com somehow has just never caught up. Do you know what happens when this show ends? Do you know what happens leading into this? He gets to write a whole bunch of checks. And that doesn't matter if it's for the airlines or for the hotels. That doesn't matter if that's to his staff and his office, of which not one single person has been laid off. Not one single person has been forced to, to come into work. They were able to work from home. When the night ends, he gets to write a whole bunch of more checks while losing his live gate, his merchandise, and what I'm going to suspect is a number of sponsor dollars, and still figuring it out.
Corporate greed is the reason behind 249. That is, it's so funny, it's baffling.